Okay. All right. All right. We're going. Sorry about that. Um, welcome to our first engineering setup. Thank you guys for coming. Um, let's get started. So announcements, uh, we qualified for Seesaw. So congrats to uh, people that participated. We'll be sending a team to New York. Um, so that's exciting. Woo. Um, here's the meeting plan. Uh, Pony, everything is open source. Um, so we'll be getting set up for reverse engineering, which means you can tear apart essentially any program you can ever imagine and figure out how it works. So no, no need to find it on GitHub, you know, the source is the program itself. I'll give you guys a minute to put this in. And uh, just as a reminder, if you haven't been to a meeting before, um, you can go to ctf.sigpony.com and uh, scroll down to uh, reverse engineering setup category and put in the flag there. And this flag will also be at the end of the meeting slides. Okay. Um, so let's just get dive right in uh, with tool installation. Um, so the first tool I want to talk about is called Ghidra. So Ghidra is a tool developed by the NFA. They uh, claim to not steal your data when you install it. So hopefully that's true. Um, so it allows you to disassemble applications. So this lets you take um, the binary program on your computer and turn it into essentially pseudocode, or it looks sort of like C code. Um, so in order to install Ghidra, Ghidra we need um, Java. Um, so I want, I'm gonna step through everyone installing uh, JDK on their uh, machine. So firstly, um, open WSL or open your terminal or whatever, and make sure that um, you have a Java above 11. Um, I'm assuming most people are gonna have Java 1.8, which is the default install. So I'll be stepping through um, how to like upgrade that. But if you already have Java um, greater than 11, you're good. You don't need to do anything. Windows, you should be on the same version. Yes, sorry. If you're on Windows, do not run this in WSL. Run this in a PowerShell or command prompt. Yeah. We want the um, the host machine's Java version. Okay. All right. So um, it's pretty simple. Um, Oracle has it on their website. Um, so just look up on Google, um, like JDK. Um, the latest release is JDK 20. Um, there should be sort of binary installers for Windows and stuff, um, but make sure you're installing the JDK, not the JRE. They are separate things, and JDK is uh, what you want. Um, yeah, so look up like Oracle, I don't know, JDK 20 uh, download. Um, that should get you there for uh, Windows and for Mac. If you're on Linux, I have a separate command for you. Yes? Um, if you're on Mac, you want to be, if you're on M1, you want to be downloading the ARM64 version. Or the, the new Apple Silicon, you want ARM64. If you're on an Intel Mac, you want the AMD64 or x86. Uh, any other questions? I'll also just raise your hand. We have like some helpers up front that can help you guys out. I think I, I think I see a question up there. So I can pull up this. Um, can you pull up the site? This should be in the slides. Yeah. So um, again, this is just for Mac OS or, or Windows, um, but you just want to select um, either the x86 installer or x86 MSI installer will work. I prefer the MSI installer on Windows. And then if you're on Mac, you want the um, ARM64 DMG installer. If you're on the new like Apple M1, M2, the Apple Silicon stuff. If you're on the older Intel Macs, you want the x64 DMG installer. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, I have been informed that it was clear. Oh, well, like the, this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. okay. 
Yeah. Uh, on to the next slide. Um, on Linux, um, it's going to be even simpler. Um, so you're just going to install uh, OpenJDK 19 um, through apt. Um, if you're using you know, something else, just replace apt with yum or I don't know, whatever Nix OS is or your favorite package manager. Um, it should be roughly equivalent. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'll give you guys a second to do this, uh, but if you've already um, started, you can um, head to the um, NSA's GitHub repo. Kind of crazy they have one, um, but um, go to their GitHub repo and click on the uh, releases tab. Um, they release all their software, and you want to find the, um, they have a zip you can download. This is the, the software. Um, so you'll find the latest version will be at the top of the releases tab. Then you'll click into the assets arrow and you'll see this .zip file and you'll download that to your computer. Um, yes. Um, you can go to this link or you can look up uh, the NSA's Hydra repo. And we'll um, post the slides shortly so that you guys don't have to type in all the links and can uh, just click on it. Can I get a show of hands of who is still installing Java on their machine? Okay. Who is um, with me right now and is installing Hydra or downloading Hydra? Okay, cool. So I'll give a, another minute for those people working on Java. Um, and again, if you uh, need some help, just raise your hand. I think I see a hand up, some hands up. George, there's more hands. <laughs> Richard, I see a hand at the top. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. No, like row formation. I know. I need to assign like one helper for row. <laughs> Can you um upload the slides? I, I am okay. almost done. Am I, I think I see one more hand, um, like three rows above you. Oh, you you want to pull up the website again? Yeah. Can you pull up the website? So um, if you're on Mac and you have the new Apple Silicon, you want the ARM64 DMG installer. If you're on the old Intel Macs, you want the x86 DMG installer. If you're on Windows, you want the x64 MSI installer. Realizing, I thought there was a slide about like Java Home in here. I don't know if you need to do that on a. You definitely need to do that on a Windows, right? Thanks. No, we just install JDK and works. Oh, okay. When I installed it like a long time ago, I just set my Java Home environment variable for some reason. It might have been because you had multiple Java installed. Yeah, that's probably it. 
What slides are up? Okay. Uh, slides are up. So go to sigfony.com slash meetings. Um, and I'm going to keep moving forward with the slides. And I also see your yes, question. Um, are you talking about the current slide that's up right now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it, but you should extract. All right. Um, okay. So now that you have uh, hopefully downloaded Pedro, um, you have downloaded a zip folder. So you need to um, right click and extract that zip folder into hopefully a location you'll remember. Um, I prefer my documents folder, uh, but it's fine if you just extract it back into your downloads as well. Um, if you're on Windows, after you extract it, assuming you installed Java, there should be a file in there called pedrorun.bat. It won't say .bat, it will say uh, batch script for the type. So you'll need to uh, go inside that folder and look for the uh, run file. Um, and you'll double click on that and that will uh, run, run Ghidra. If you're on uh, Mac or Linux, um, the process is a little different. I want you to um, open up your terminal and navigate to wherever you downloaded it to. Um, so in my case, that would be downloads slash Ghidra, whatever the name of my release is. And then we need to run these two commands. The first command will make sure that Ghidra is an executable binary. And the second command will launch Ghidra. Can I get a thumbs up or confirmation that people are able to run or launch Ghidra? Okay, I see lots of Apple. Is, are any of those thumbs Windows? Okay, all right, cool. Very nice. All right, um, so if you're on Mac, um, Apple has put in a lot of security protections against Hedra. Um, so what I want you to do right now is actually download the uh, first RE down challenge binary from uh, owning CTF. Um, can you go to CTF? So if you're again, if you're on um, the new, or if, you're, if you're on Mac, um, you need to uh, download the first RE binary, and we're going to need to essentially like kind of brute force all the security protections. So download this, um, and we'll need to uh, step through setting that up. You want anything? There's a there's their plugins, so we can like switch between. Okay, you could also um, if, I just want to show them how to make a new feature project. Okay. Could you start a new feature project? Yeah. And uh, there's a couple steps to import the Hydra, so we're gonna start up a new feature project and show you how that how that works. Can I get a show of hands of who's still installing Java? Okay, that's good. Who is uh, still installing Hydra? All right, perfect. I'll go back to those slides. Oh, all right. Well, all right, all right. Uh, so if you're on Mac, um, you're going to want to go to the top, or you'll want to hit new non-shared project. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's intuitive how you get there. And then you can name your project whatever you want. Um, you can name it Ciccone, not Ciccone. Um, and you'll hit finish. And it's going to basically just put you in this open um, user window. Um, from here, you're going to hit a you're going to download your challenge binary and then go back into Hydra. And then go file, import file. Well, it was on downloads. 
Very sad. <laughs> all right. Um, well, you guys can see all my downloads if you want, but first, hello, there we go. All right. You're going to hit OK. Um, all the default settings should be fine. So if there's any additional dialogues, you can just hit OK on those two. And then finally, you'll double click on the file. What? what is Mac? Mac will do the same, but once you get to the decompiler screen, it'll throw a bunch of errors. Oh, right. Oh, it opened it. And it should open in a new window. Well, okay. um, and it says, has not been analyzed. If you'd like to analyze, and you hit yet. So if you're on um, Apple, this is going to uh, likely give you an error. Well, no, yeah, you'll you'll see this screen. Oh, you'll see this screen. Okay, then hit analyze again. Then you click analyze, and then, um, like these are open all the windows, but yeah, on Windows it should analyze fine. So if you're not on uh, Mac, this should analyze fine. Um, if you're on the uh, Mac and received an error, can I get like a thumbs up or something? Yeah. Okay. Um, you're gonna go back to the slides. Yeah. This one? Uh, yes. Okay. So it's uh sort of annoying, but um, what you're gonna need to do is go to the privacy and security tab of your settings. Um, and you're gonna first um. There's going to be a binary that pops up there. It should be like decompiler underscore something, something. You're going to hit allow on that. And then you're going to um, go back to Ghidra and go to the top bar. And you're going to want to go um, analyze, auto analyze all, and hit run again. And you're going to get another error. And you're going to go back to privacy and security and do it again until uh, there's no more errors when you auto analyze. <laughs> There's, there's, this is the way to do it. I, I don't know how, how else. Would, would you like to explain this, sir? Yeah, so you can strip the quarantine flags for the binary so that gatekeeper must like. Mm. Did not know that. It's like a bit that's set or something. It's like, it means like somebody can get rid of them. Hmm. All right. We'll have to include that in the next installation. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see lots of hands. Um, and I think this is, well, there's others. Do you want to do a demo on now? Specifically, I think that might help. Yeah, but like you know, you've already like done all the privacy stuff, so it's like, well, I think if I install a new version of Ghidra, maybe it will come. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, all right, I guess you want, um, you want to, yeah, I can, I can download, I could do a full installation on that. All right, it's on what I was surprised, so you should be able to do two, three, airplane, so airplane. Yeah. yeah, screen right now. Uh, 14 4. What's the password? Um, 2267. Okay. The worker. Um, probably just changing the models. I don't know if I turn back on. Do you need to go to that URL? I don't think you do. I mean, so this mirroring. I never tried this before. Yeah. 
If you want, you can join the Zoom meeting screen share with us briefly. Make sure that Zoom. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Should be on sequence. Hello, guys. If you are on Mac and you're having an issue where it says GNU unable to demangle symbols, some pop up like that, try restarting Hydra and that should fix your issue. I'm going to do a demo of uh, installing Hydra and setting all the permissions from scratch. So hopefully that helps. Can you see that? This is being set up, but it'll work. Can you do uh, mic? Yeah, let's go. Okay, so uh, he's just going to go through the full process. So he's going to download, he's going to go to the GitHub, download Hydra um, from the GitHub repository. He's going to go down this folder and then extract the Hydra installation once it finishes downloading. Yeah, and then uh, and in the slides he's going to, like uh, like he like he says in the slides he's going to open terminal and he's going to um go into his downloads folder or wherever you uh, downloaded Hydra to or extracted. And then um, you're going to run the permissions to make the Hydra script executable. So looks like it's already executable. I guess. Oh, it is okay. Okay. Yeah, talk about this. Yeah, so um uh so uh first thing you're gonna do is go to do file create new project, neon here project, um you can put it wherever you want and name it whatever you want. Um and now you have an empty project, uh, but you need to import a file to analyze now. So you do file input file. Um, and then he is going to go download the first RE binary from ctfs620.com. Uh, click OK to import it. Um, click OK again. Um, and now it shows up in the little like a folder view. So you're going to double click on that to open it. And now it says it's going to ask if uh, the file has been analyzed. So you want to analyze it. But once you click analyze, um, you're going to get this pop up that says, oops, it's downloaded from the internet and Apple, something like that. So, what you're going to do is you're going to click OK a bunch of times. And then it's going to get that, you're going to get that error. And then you're going to go to settings. You're going to go to uh, privacy, security, and find, uh, scroll down until you find this uh, approved subsection. On uh on older Mac versions, um it'll have like a separate tab for like um security. Right. Uh but <laughs> you're going to want to essentially approve the binary and then um you kind of have to enter in your authorization for that. Bro, what's going on? <laughs> Bro, I said this is my password. Bro. All right. All right, but anyways, you're gonna be the cloud. <laughs> Um, and then you can uh, 
go back and go analysis auto analysis. Yeah, and then and then uh, you can go back into Ghidra once you once you load it, go back to the top of analyze, click analyze, and then click auto analyze. It will pop up the same windows, and then you can run it again, and it shouldn't error out anymore. Shouldn't. <laughs> but if it does error out more, just check the secure, the settings and privacy tab again, and then click allow again, or maybe you need to restart Ghidra. Okay. <laughs> I swear I know my own password. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to move on to some other stuff to install other than uh, Intro. Okay, um, Python and phone tools. Um, hopefully everyone has heard of Python. Um, Pwn Tools is a way for uh, scripting um, interactions between a server or scripting interactions with another program. Um, so here's an example. Um, they imported Pwn Tools and they're using the uh, process function. And they're actually able to um, receive input or uh, standard in from the program. Um, once they've received standard in, um, or before they receive standard in, they're able to uh, send this command and then um, receive the output. Um, the idea here is this is going to make um, your exploit writing as easy as possible. Um, so I believe we already have a couple of challenges up for um, the basics of phone tools and practicing it in our setup category. Um, but other than remotes, you can actually use this for interacting with other processes as well. And it's very helpful. Um, so install. Um, yeah, so if you don't have Python already um, and you're on Mac, you can use uh, Brew to install it. On the um, next slide, I'm going to show you a, um, a different tool called PyEnv, which is um, a slightly more complicated way, but uh, more robust way to set up Python. Um, after you do that, um, this, oh, this is just Python. OK. Um, yes, yeah, so if you're on Windows, do this through WSO. Um, so apt update and then um, install Python, Python tip. Um, don't install it through uh, Windows. Um, it's going to be a painful experience. Yeah, just a, just a note, like we only, uh, earlier we told you to install Java and then Ghidra on Windows. Um, that's because it's just easier, it's better performance when Ghidra runs on Windows. Um, but for like most of the times when you're solving CPF challenges, you're going to use Pwn tools or Python. So we recommend setting it up in WSL. And that's like installing Ghidra is probably like the one exception we have for like installing Windows. Yes, thank you, man. Okay. Um, if you want to install it with through PyEMV, um, you can run this command. Um, you can also go to the uh, GitHub page for PyEMV. Um, the idea of PyEMV is it lets you like quickly switch between the versions of Python. Um, so I can run one command in my terminal and completely switch from Python 3.8 to Python 3.11 or switch to a different um, sort of virtual environment easily, which uh, makes it nice if I ever have like version 8 conflicts. We we'll also want to talk about like use cases or I can also yeah. This is also extremely useful if you're later down the line, you're seeing a class and it require you to install a specific version of Python, but you already have Python installed. So if you do this, uh, if you do it this way, you can kind of manage multiple Python versions without like, and it's easier later down the line through classes. Yeah. Okay, uh, one thing about Python, um, the installation should be very straightforward. It should be uh, Python 3 m hit install phone tools. Um, if you got a command not found when you tried to run Python 3, you're going to want to um, sort of reload your path. Um, and you can run source uh, or that command to uh, reload your environment file. Um, if you're on certain versions of Mac, your default shell may be ZSH. And you may want to also run that command in the corner um, to reload your uh, ZSH configuration file. Once you reload these files, assuming you've installed Python, 
um, you should be able to uh, run this um, install mode tools command successfully. Um, can I get a thumbs up or a thumbs down if that command works for people? Some thumbs up, some thumbs down. What what are, are you getting? Um, for me, it's saying that like it, it didn't build a new computer. Oh no! I thought they fixed this. Uh, I think it's uh it's, an, it's on the old slides. It's on the old slides. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll make a quick edit. We <laughs> thought it's been like a year. We thought they had fixed this issue. Apparently, they have not fixed this issue. We have uh we have additional steps if you receive um the real file issue. But it involves building uh, one package from source, kind of annoying. Oh. That's right, because um, I guess we recommend the document to see what we're going for. But is it in the version machine? The document container? Or, Sorry. or like the steps to the task? Um, oh, did you hit? It should be published. It should be published. It should be on the website. On the internet. Yeah. Re refresh. On the web on oh, the website. Oh, I just haven't posted the link in this one. <laughs> um, I think I can post the link in this one. I can post it on. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julius. I, I do we have <laughs> is it not the let me check the full thank you, Is there a rev setup? I I swear I wrote this shit down somewhere. Rev one setup. Yes. Like... <sighs> okay. Yeah, yes, there's the box. That's good. Okay, all right. I'm going to use this type of noise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, here is your M1 sort of painful installation instructions if you receive that real file error. Um, the reason is they don't release a uh, binary for um, ARM64, so you need to build one package from source. Um, yeah, that's, that's the steps. It'll be in the slide. Um, essentially, you uh, download the Unicorn package, um, and then assuming you already have brew installed from our setup meeting, um, you just run the installation manually. And after that um, installation for Unicorn is completed, you should be able to do um, the PIP3 uh, install phone tools successfully. I think I stay here. Can I get a thumbs up if you successfully have called everything so far? Um, okay. Can I get a thumbs down if you're still installing phone tools? Okay. All right. Ah. Uh. Speeding noise accentuating. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like I see someone in the purple. Yeah. And helpers, if you're helping people with the same issue repeatedly, please come down so we can update the slides. Some capacity. I I I just. Uh, yeah. Yes, the box on the right is to fix the building wheel error. All right, now it is a nice slide. Thank you, Vince. No, no, like it's not going to corner. No, it's, going, it's, no, it's like building a wheel. Okay. Wheel. Building a wheel. Gonna corn, dude. That's a web server. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Okay. Um, what's what's the problem? <laughs> There might be something wrong. I can take a look. Okay. Who here has uh, phone tools installed? Okay, who here has phone tools installed on Apple Silicon? Okay. Um, 
Um, sorry, if you're getting a Korean founder for uh, the last one that says Python, do a uh, Python 3 instead. All right, I'll I'll just move on uh, so that way um, you don't hold anyone else. Um, so uh, for those who have questions to solve, um, the next step is GDB and uh, GEF. So uh, GDB stands for the general debugger. Um, the G sorry GNG debugger. Um, so you'll be using this a lot in um, like classes like uh, two two five or or things like that. But uh, it lets you kind of run x86 programs and then you can debug, um, view their memory, um, see what they're doing, set breakpoints. Um, and so we'll, we'll teach you how to use GDB uh, kind of during Rev 2. Um, our next uh, meeting, which is Thursday, is Rev 1. Uh, that'll be a little bit more simpler reverse engineering. Um, but uh, We'll have you install GDB in advance just so you can get things set up. And there's also GEF, which is GDB, but with enhanced features. Um, so there's a lot of kind of quality of life improvements to GDB added. Uh, and there's also Pwn Debug, uh, which is an alternative to GEF. I personally use Pwn Debug. It's quite nice. Um, but again, it's just kind of improving GDB because GDB by default, when you run it, is kind of a little unintuitive and uh, you kind of have to know what you're doing in order to get in. So, um, so for math, uh, I don't know about I don't know about the Docker note. What's that? What's that? Next one. Okay. okay doc, uh, so Mac, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, for Windows or uh, Linux, uh, we're using WSL. Um, just sudo app install GDB. Most likely it already is installed. Um, and then. If you want to install GEF, you can run um, that command to download GEF. Um, you can also find Pwn Debug by searching on GitHub as well. Uh, and then this is for uh, if you this is this will work for both Windows and Mac, um, but this is mainly for Mac users. Um, so uh, for uh, because uh, x86 the Mac can't run x86 natively, so uh, you're going to have to enable Rosetta, which is kind of like this uh, software virtualization that allows you to translate um, instructions for to work to have x86 binaries run on Mac. So you're going to run uh, this stack dash, this install Rosetta command, um, and then you're also going to want to download Docker desktop or Mac. Um, Windows, Windows space. Oh, yeah. the switch. Um, and uh, and then you're going to go just follow these settings, and then uh, you can uh, enable Rosetta for Docker, and then we have a Docker container which kind of comes pre-installed with a lot of the fun tools, uh, Rev tools that you'll need. So. This Docker container is on our GitHub repo. Yeah, you, there's also some version requirements, otherwise you're going to run into issues. Um, so you have to be on Mac OS 12.3 or uh, 
And you also have to have the latest version of Docker Desktop. Um, oh. so, I, did you DM it to me? I did. Uh, there's a fix for the I I too many fixes. <laughs> okay. All right. I think they have uh, fixed the wheel error. There's uh, one more thing you needed to install ahead of time. Um, the M1 setup for this slide. This one? Or... Uh, no. Uh, oh, I must have added the wrong. That I, I... <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, which one? The brew install package config. All right. You need to run brew install pkg config as one of those uh, installation commands. All right. Here's what, here's what I need. All right. Yeah. And so it's all that, and then um, do the setup.py install. Then it should um, hopefully install Unicorn successfully. Uh, Tested our one M1 Mac, so you know, should work. Okay. Yes, so the, the new line you want to run um, is that brew install pkg config. Um, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Okay, yeah, um, as Ben said, um, if you're on M1, you are not running x86, you are running um, ARM64, which is a completely different computer architecture. Um, luckily, uh, Mac has something built into it called Rosetta. Rosetta translates um, x86 instructions to be able to run on your computer. Um, so if you haven't already, install Rosetta and uh, download Docker. Um, I have uh, created a, a Docker container that will uh, take advantage of the sort of Rosetta features that um, Apple offers you. Um, yes, once you're inside Docker, um, can I do the size share my screen again? Yeah. Okay, um, I'm opening up Docker just to show you where you want to go. So once you have Docker, um, you want to go to uh, settings, and then um, I believe uh, features and development, and you want to check this. Use Rosetta for AMD 64 x86 emulation. Um, and before you do that, you'll need to make sure that um, this usable virtualization framework is checked in general settings. So check this and check uh, use Rosetta. Yeah. Bingo. Okay. Um, after that is installed, um, you can clone um, that link and um, CD into that directory. So this is, after all this is done, I know this takes like a hot second to do, these are the two commands you want to run. Um, yes. Uh, let me see if there's anything non-Mac related. Uh, I know, given them a lot of screen time, so. Well, yeah. um, this is for Mac. This is for Mac. Um, yeah, so if you're on Windows, um, the final step is just going to be see if you can find the flag in that first RE binary. Um, and then, um, Continue working on, um, you can start trying out reverse engineering challenges in the vault. Um, so if you're on Pony CTF, there's a category at the top called vault, and you can start solving some of those like low point value um, reverse engineering challenges. Um, yeah. Okay, so if you are on a Mac, assuming you've installed this, um, there's two commands. Uh, start and run, 
So start, you will uh, run once. That's not confusing at all. <laughs> start, you will execute once to um, build the Docker container. After you run the start command, after you've executed the start command, um, you can then use the run command to connect to this container again at a future point in time. Um, the reason this is separated is typically Docker um, sort of has like a transient state. So once the Docker container has shut down, um, it will like wipe any changes you've made. But in this case, that's not what we want. So I have a separate command to connect to the Docker container and one to rebuild it. Um, I was not able to get GDB working. Um, if I have a update for you guys, um, I will hopefully bring it up at the next meeting. Um, theoretically, there is support. It is very deep inside Rosetta. Um, and I've not been able to find it yet. I am very excited to get GDB working. I have not been able to do it. So if anyone gets GDB working, you know, please let me know. Um, and then I personally like to use um, the uh, remote um, Docker container feature of VS Code. Um, so instead of, you know, editing through Vim or whatever, you can install the um, Dev containers plugin. I believe, yeah, Dev containers plugin, um, and then you can open up the Docker container directly. It's pretty great. Um, yes. Can I get a show of hands if you're on Windows and you're still working on installing something? Okay. What are you working on installing? Okay. Can I get a helper? Yeah. Um, yes. What what's the issue you're having? Uh Gray, buddy? I'm just curious. We're, we're just going. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then if you're on Mac, um, raise your hand if you're still doing home tools. Um Raise your hand if the Pwn tools fix I said fixed your issue and you're able to install Pwn tools. Okay, so you know help help a couple people. I think that's not everyone. Um yeah. I think that's pretty much the case. Um so if you guys still have issues, uh we'd actually love to like help you guys. So uh, make sure to like send a message in Discord either in the Ask for Help text channel or um, in the Ask for Help forum thread. Um, so you can create a post and then uh, if you include like your error message, then we can like help debug it. It also helps us like kind of future proof our meetings. So um, it, it will make a rest of it easier for people in the future. Yeah, um, I'll go to the end. Um, I'm just gonna wrap up. Um, I've covered everything. Um, our next meeting will be reverse engineering one. Um, this will be interpreted code rev, so no actual uh, binaries being used. It will be run by uh, Richard right there. Um, so get hyped. Should be fun. And then, um, of course, uh, this Saturday. Yeah, I guess. OK, this Saturday, fall CTF. That date is not the right date, but it is. Uh, uh, that... It's 27th, right? No, it's 23rd. Oh, OK, it's 23rd. So let's do it. I've blown my mind. Um, yeah, if you haven't already registered, go to that link, sigpony.com slash register um, and get, get some free stuff. You know, it should be fun. And of course, it's aimed at complete beginners. So uh, don't feel kind of scared if you've never solved a CTF challenge before um, or if this is your like first or second meeting. Um, this competition is for you. Um, yeah, there's a meeting flag. Thank you guys for uh, coming. Um, of course, we're going to stick around and help you guys with setup. Um, 